Today, I'm going to show you how to stream GPS data across a network and why you might want to. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. During field day this year, I was running two separate computers. I was running my primary station uh, that I was doing Winlink and JSA call from. That had the 705 attached to it, which has a built-in GPS. In addition to that, I had a Digipeter running on a Raspberry Pi 4, which also required a GPS. And I just got to thinking, kind of during that event, is it possible to utilize one GPS device and get all of the computers on a network connected to it? Well, I did a little research and it's not as hard as you might think. So let's take a look at a graphic and kind of cover a few basics. Then we'll jump over to the two computers and show you how to get that data streaming over the network. So you may hear me say as we go through this tutorial, uh, calling one computer a server and one a client. And just in case you're not familiar with that concept, the server is the one that has the data and the client is the one that needs the data. So in this case, the GPS is attached to whichever computer you deem is the server. In my case, going forward, I'm going to be using the Evolve laptop and the ICOM 705. Uh, paired together. So that will be my server computer. Anything else on the network will then become the client. I only have to configure the server one time, but I'll have to configure each client that connects to the server one time as well. So once it's set up and working, it's good to go uh, unless maybe a IP address changes on your network. Uh, in that case, you might have to go in and plug in a new server address on the client in order for it to see it. But once this is set up, this can be run over uh, the network utilizing Wi-Fi or a Cat5 connection. Before we jump over to the server, I wanna remind you to back up your system. I'll also talk about how to back up a particular file as we go through this, but definitely back up your system. Uh, trying to figure this out, I ran into a couple of quirks and uh, well, it took me a little while to recover, but I finally got everything back on track and was able to try it again. All right, let's jump over to the server and get this rolling. So for the server system today, I'm running a laptop running Linux Mint 21, uh, which is a Debian-based system. So as far as I'm aware, this should work perfectly well on the Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, I did go ahead and verify that my GPS does have a lock, as you can see there. So looks like we are ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to run sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash gpsd. You want to come through this file here, and this is my GPS, so we're not going to make any changes to that line there that defines the GPS unit itself. Uh, we are going to come down to this line here. This is a typical way that I would run the GPSD server if I was just using it on this particular laptop. However, we're going to comment that out and you probably will not have this line here. Now you could just make the changes on the line above. I prefer to do a new line so that I remember what I did in the past. And by putting that pound sign in front of the line, uh, it gets ignored when things are loaded. So we're going to define a new option here. This is GPSD underscore options equals open quotation mark hyphen capital G lowercase n close quotation mark. Once you get that change made, we're going to press control S to save those changes and control X to get out of it. The next command will be sudo systemctl edit hyphen hyphen full gpsd dot socket. I'll leave this here on the screen for just a couple of seconds or you can pause the video so that you can get that full command entered in. Once you've got it, go ahead and press return. Now, yours is going to look entirely different to this more than likely. So I'm just going to leave this on the screen. Now, what I suggest is before you start making changes, 
I would copy the original contents of the file and maybe just drop it into a text file on my desktop. Uh, that way I've got a good known working backup that I can revert to. There was a couple of times trying to figure this out that I completely hosed up GPSD. So uh, if it hadn't have been for those backup files, I would have been in trouble. Uh, might have been rebuilding a system or at least falling back to a backup. The last backup that was a couple of weeks old. But uh, you will need to make these changes inside this particular file. Once you're done, go ahead and press Control S and Control X to get out of it. Now that we've got those changes made to the two different files, we need to run sudo systemctl again. This time we're going to run restart gpsd.socket and gp, uh, gpsd.service. Go ahead and press return. Now, as you can see, I got a job failed here, so we're going to go ahead and do a reboot. There was a couple of different times I was messing with this and would get this job failed. After a reboot, however, it seemed to clear itself up. So let's go ahead and just reboot this system now, and we'll see what happens when it comes back online. Now that the system is back online, I went ahead and opened up the terminal and we're going to run, uh, let's see, system CTL status GPSD. We'll go ahead and press return on that and you can see that it is active and running. So it looks like everything sorted itself out with a good reboot. So I'm gonna press uh, Q to get out of this screen and then I want to run CGPS. And we just want to verify that that data is still there before we move to the next step. But it looks like everything is configured correctly for the server. Now let me show you guys how to configure the client. Now on the client system, in this case this is a Raspberry Pi, we need to modify that same GPSD file. So we'll do so with sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash GPSD. When you get that typed in, go ahead and press return and that will bring you into this file here. Now, just like before, we want to comment out the line that you see that might have your current GPS unit in it. And we want to add this new line here that says devices equals open quotation mark GPSD colon forward slash forward slash. And then it gives us an IP address. That is the server's IP address. So you'll need to find out what your server's IP address is and verify that both of these machines are on the same network. Uh, in this case, my server is 10.10.10.190 colon, and you'll want to put 2947 behind it, provided you didn't make any modifications to the port numbers. 2947 is the default, and that's what I used, and it worked perfectly well. Now, down below, you're going to see probably your current GPSD options are dash N and dash B. I commented those out and added this new line that was GPSD underscore options equals open and closing quotation marks. And this particular setting here was kind of the last piece of the puzzle for me because running the dash N and dash B, it would not access the GPS from the server. So once you have these modifications made, you'll go ahead and press Control S to get out of this and Control X. Now we will need to restart the GPSD server. Uh, we do that with sudo systemctl restart GPSD dot service. Go ahead and press return and you should see no errors. I didn't get any, I, I didn't run into any trouble uh, here trying to restart that service. It was only on the server that I kind of saw that quirkiness going on. Now let's go ahead and check and see if we can access the GPS from the server. So we'll run C GPS. And if you give it just a couple of seconds, it should be pulling that data in across the network. If not, go back and double check your work. Make sure you didn't miss any characters. Remember, Linux is case sensitive. So if it's uppercase or lowercase, that is two different things. So double check your work and keep playing with this and you should be able to access your GPS across the network as well. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. 
We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.